Hello guys, welcome back to Chasing Infinity. This is Adarsh and today we'll be seeing how to do linear regression using the gradient descent algorithm. So in this tutorial, uh, first we'll see what linear regression is, then we'll uh, define the loss function and then we'll see how the gradient descent algorithm works and finally we'll implement the algorithm in Python and make predictions, okay? So what is linear regression? In statistics, linear regression is a linear approach to modeling the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. So let x be the independent variable here and let y be the dependent variable. So we will, what we'll do is we'll define a linear relationship between these two variables using the equation y equal to mx plus c. So this is the same equation of a line that you studied in high school where m is the slope of the line and c is the y-intercept. So we will use this equation to train our model with the given data set and predict the values of y for any given value of x. So for our given data set, we'll find the best fitting line or in other words, the line that is at the least distance from all the points or the line that gives the least error. So by finding the value of m and c, we'll be able to plot this line, okay? So to find out the best fitting line, we'll need to measure the error in some way. We'll be using the loss function to do this. The loss is the error in our predicted value of m and c, okay? Our goal is to minimize this error value and obtain the most accurate values of m and c. So today we'll use the mean squared error function to calculate the loss. Uh, there are three steps in this function. So first find the difference between the actual value of y and the predicted value of y for any given value of x. So the predicted value of y is just the value mx plus c for the given value of x. So this difference is actually the distance between the predicted value and the actual value. Next, uh, we square this difference. Uh, this is to avoid any negative values. And finally, we find the mean of the squares for every given value in x. So that's why the name uh, mean squared error. So in this equation, uh, y is the actual value and y bar is the predicted value. And if we substitute the value of mx plus c, now that we have defined the loss function, uh, let's get into the interesting part that is minimizing it and finding m and c. So the gradient descent algorithm. Gradient descent is an iterative optimization algorithm to find the minimum value of a function. Here that function is our loss function that we just defined. Uh, to understand the gradient descent algorithm better, imagine a valley and a person with no sense of direction who wants to get to the bottom of the valley, okay? He goes down the slope and takes large steps when the slope is steep and small steps when the slope is less steep. He decides his next position based on his current position and stops when he gets to the bottom of the valley, which is his goal. Now let's apply gradient descent to find our values of m and c and let's uh, let's approach it step by step, okay? So initially let m equal to zero and c equal to zero and let the variable l be our learning rate. So this learning rate controls how much the value of m or c changes with each step, okay? So l should be a very small value like 0.0001 and this is for good accuracy. So if the value of L is too high, then gradient descent won't reach the minimum point and will just keep oscillating. And if the value is too small, then it'll take a lot of iterations to get to the accurate value. So next let's calculate the partial derivative of the loss function uh, with respect to M first, okay? So finding the partial derivative with respect to M simply means that differentiate the function for only the terms containing m and consider everything else to be a constant, okay? So since we have a whole squared, so we apply the chain rule in this case. On differentiating that, we have two times y minus mx plus c. And here the only term that contains m is minus mx, okay? So the de derivative of that is minus x. So we are left with this equation. We know that mx plus c is the predicted value y bar, okay? So let's substitute that. So we are left with this equation. Derivative with respect to m equal to minus 
2 by n sum from i equal to 0 to n xi times the difference between y and y bar. Similarly, now let's find the partial derivative with respect to c. So in the same way, we differentiate and we are left with this equation minus 2 by n sum of sum from i equal to 0 to n and the difference between yi minus yi bar. Uh, the only difference between these two equations is that dc does not have the xi term. Now next step, uh, we update the current value of m and c using the following equation. So m equal to m minus l times the partial derivative of with respect to m. So l here was our learning rate, right? So with each update, our accuracy increases and we are getting closer and closer to our goal, okay? And similarly, c is also equal to c minus l times partial derivative with respect to c. And we repeat this process until our loss function is a very small value or ideally zero. Now let's go back to our analogy and try and understand this better. So M can be considered as the current position of the person and D is equivalent to the steepness of the slope and L can be the speed with which this man moves. Okay. And the new value of M that we calculate using the above equation uh, will be his next position and L times D will be the size of the steps that he will take to get to this new position from here, right? So that means when the slope is more steep, he takes longer steps and when it is less steep, uh, he is closer to his goal and so he takes smaller steps. And finally, he arrives at the bottom of the valley uh, which corresponds to our loss function becoming equal to zero. Now that uh, we are at our goal and we have uh, the optimum values of M and C, uh, we are ready to build our model and make predictions, okay? So we'll approach the implementations three steps, okay? First step, we'll uh, take the data and pre-process it. And in the second step, we'll build the model. And the third step, we'll make predictions, okay? So I've made a few imports here. We have imported NumPy as NP and Pandas as PD. So NumPy is used to uh, make our calculations easier and Pandas is used to read our input data which is in CSV format, okay. I have also imported matplotlib. Uh, this is to visualize our results, okay. And I have also set the size of our plots, okay. So now let's import the data. Now before we do anything, let's see how our input data looks like. So we have two columns. Uh, first column is the value of x and second column is the value of y, okay? These are independent variable and this will be our dependent variable and for any given value of x, we'll be predicting, we'll be creating a model to predict the value of y. So, let's define the variables. So, we've used the iLog function here. So, this means get all the rows from first column, that is the column with index 0 and those values will be stored into x and similarly all the rows in the second column, that is the column with index 1 will be stored in y. Let's uh, see how our data looks like. So to run the cell, press Ctrl and enter. So this is how our input data looks like, okay. Now let's start building our model. So initially let the value of m and c be equal to 0. So we'll also define the learning rate L, let L be 0 0.0001 and the next variable that we'll define is the number of iterations, let's call it epochs, okay. So we'll go through 1000 iterations of gradient descent. If you choose a smaller value for learning rate, then you, you'll have to increase the number of epochs and that will result, result in better accuracy, okay. Define the value of n. So n will be the number of elements in x, okay? So let's typecast it into float since we'll be dividing it. So now let's start our gradient descent process. So first let's predict the value of y uh, with the current value of m and c, okay? Now le next let's find the partial derivative with respect to m. So let's call it dm. We'll just simply convert the equation that we saw into code. So that is minus two by n multiplied by sum of x times the actual value of y minus the predicted value of y. That is y equal to mx plus c value. Similarly, uh, the partial derivative with respect to c minus 2 by n times the sum of difference between the actual value of y and the predicted value of y. Now let's update the values of m and c. So m will be m minus the learning rate l times the derivative with respect to m and similarly for c. So now 
In the next iteration, we will be using this updated value of m and c to calculate the y predicted values. So uh, that means that with each iteration, as the accuracy increases, the error or the difference between the actual y and the predicted y will get smaller. And that means our derivative value also gets smaller which means that this term is also getting smaller and so the updation in m will also be smaller right so as our accuracy increases uh, the values of m and c will also be updated accordingly right so uh, as we approach 100% uh, accuracy the updation this this term will be will be almost zero and the updation will be very negligible and that's how the algorithm basically works so now let's uh, print out the values of m and c and now let's run this and see oh okay looks like an error so float object cannot be interpreted as an integer uh, for i in range n okay let's uh, change it to length of x now it should work let's try okay so now we have the optimum values of m and c and now we are ready to make the predictions so making the predictions is simply calculating the value of mx plus c right so it's a y pred variable actually so let's just copy this and paste this so making predictions part is done so now let's uh, visualize our results okay okay so for each value of x uh, we have the predicted value of y in orange and the actual value of y in blue okay so it is along this regression line that we get the least error for each and every value of x okay so uh, if you want to see the uh, regression line instead of the scatter plot uh, we have to take the leftmost point that is the minimum values of uh, y pred and x the rightmost value that is the maximum value of y pred and x and draw a line between those so let's do that so i've also set the color to red now let's try and run this okay so we have our regression line so gradient descent is one of the simplest and most widely used algorithm in machine learning uh, mainly because it can be applied to any function uh, in order to optimize it and learning it is basically the foundation to mastering machine learning so you can check out the written version of this tutorial on medium and also the code and the data set you can find it on github i'll leave the links in the description so if you have any problems implementing this uh, you can email me or leave them in the comments I'll help you out and if you learned something new from this video today please do leave a like and subscribe to my channel uh, for more such videos and I'll see you in the next one